uh, namaste i welcome you all to the 64th session of guru bodha i am dr hiba i welcome all of you to this session and on behalf of all of us i cordially welcome dr mb gurata sir to this session and i also cordially invite uh, uh, cordially welcome dr ragram to sir to this session this class is made available for easy ayurveda weekly class subscribers if you know somebody who can be benefited with this please go to easyarvada.com slash video dash class so coming to the topic of the day is in a common and uh, in a common beverage we all we all love and some people get addicted is coffee and tea and i keep on getting this question over and over guruja sir how to analyze coffee and tea based on doshas what are their effects and while taking some somebody is taking treatment can they drink coffee out even though the question is a very simple one but it is packed with a lot of uh, issues so generally till we were uh, young and uh, we are just learning the things and when we understood for a, to a large extent uh, we used to know that what is means coffee and tea is what we used to get at house very typically but presently in the market it is flooded with different type of coffee and teas so that is very typical to what to answer how this coffee affects or how it do i say a tea affects on dosha it's a typically a big question because a coffee may be a filtered coffee it may be a cutam coffee it may be a instant coffee it may be cappuccino it may be espresso so many with milk without milk with sugar without sugar plenty of varieties similarly tea there are plenty of teas and nowadays to add to more information on that are make more complex in the market we have got vata tea pitta tea kapha tea. so with all these background if you want to analyze this it's typically a, um, too much of diversified information is there but i'll stick on myself to basic information of coffee and tea generally coffee and tea both are having an effect on pitta it increases pitta coffee is ushna in nature and because of the purview of its ushna guna it increases pitta whereas tea is also ushna but it is not so ushna as coffee compared to coffee but tea largely also has kashaya rasa so thereby whenever there is some wound washing or something like that or even hair washing we use tea because of its kashaya rasa nature because it's an astringent but in a large doses even tea also increases pitta by its vidagdata so we need to understand this coffee and tea both on a large doses will going to increase the pitta but coffee by virtue or its nature ushna guna as well as it also has some tikshnata it will reduce pitta to have I mean it reduces vata to some extent that's the reason many a time during cold seasons or something like that we used to take for coffee as a something which is opposite to the uh, prevailing situation so with this background we can consider uh, coffee as one of the vata shamaka pitta vardaka material whereas uh, tea is directly pitta vardaka in nature wonderful points put uh, put out there by uh, guruja sir and again those uh, different types of coffees and teas uh, which guruja sir mentioned already uh, or what we can call it as <laughs> mind stimulators <laughs> uh, so it is it's always tempting these things but yes uh, coffee and tea so this is an important question as guruja sir said it cannot be uh, it is a diversified question also we cannot shortlist uh, the action so basically i am sticking to the basic properties uh, so the uh, of the basic coffee and the basic tea with or without uh, milk all those things i am uh, not touching upon or uh, cappuccino or espresso or whatever so basic uh, coffee and basic uh, tea so when we go through uh, whatever material we have regarding those things so when we look at coffee it is used to relieve mental and physical fatigue so basically we can find its property as it removes physical fatigue and mental fatigue uh, once we have a cup of coffee we can also experience the same thing so prop- so that also indicates that it increases mental alertness so since it is alerting so it is increasing the mental alertness so probably mental alertness is due to uh, vata and pitta and uh, if kapha is high we will definitely not be alert so probably we can take that it stimulates 
vata and pitta uh, in this particular perspective so vata pitta stimulator i can call it as so going to other benefits so we can see coffee being benefited for the patients of parkinsons gallstones type 2 diabetes uh, patients so coffee is recommended so as per some research and also some doctors uh, lung and uh, breast cancer prevention so it treats headache low bp obesity uh, adhd all those things now coming to the caffeine which is a, a very important component of uh, coffee it stimulates cardio uh, sorry central nervous system very importantly caffeine stimulates ner central nervous system already we have seen that it is relieving mental and physical fatigue it uh, stimulates central nervous system it stimulates heart and also muscle so most action of the coffee is to activate or calm vata and balance kapha so we can take so it it can either activate vata or balance kapha so the tamasika bhava will come down by using of uh, coffee so that is what i felt uh, reading through the different uh, references available with uh, coffee also when we can see coffee and tea both here prevent or delay parkinson's disease we have some uh, Uh, research works like coffee and tea prevent or prevent or delay parkinson's disease so in that case we can take them as anti vata or vata balancing they may stimulate vata but they may not aggravate vata so they may be vata balancing anti vata or vata balancing and coffee also prevents gall stones so we know ashmari if we take stones as ashmari ashmari is predominantly formed by kapha formed by kapha so again it is anti kapha so since it's it prevents gallstones we can take it as anti kapha so since it prevents type 2 diabetes mellitus also some study shows it is again anti kapha though we have different types of prameha vataja pittaja kapha so in all types of prameha again there is a kapha predominance so we can take it as anti kapha caffeinated coffee is another one caffeinated coffee study show that uh, it prevents gout so when we see this it uh, we can consider it as calming vata and rakta so we are seeing it stimulates vata calms vata calms rakta also it is anti kapha so going through the therapeutic properties i am uh, listing out these things and uh, it improves thinking coffee some studies tells it improve our thinking capacity that means our thinking thought process is based on pranavata udanavata sadaka pitta and tarpaka kapha balance though other doshas may also be involved when we go through the avarana prakarana so mainly the thought process or thinking process goes through prana udana sadaka tarpaka uh, these components sub types of vata so we can think coffee balances those those things also since it improves thinking on the other hand excess coffee increases anxiety and agitation uh, we are speaking about using it in balance and also in excess when we use it in excess it increases anxiety and agitation that again shows it is not definitely vata balancing it is vata increasing only so this condition is called as caffeinism so when we use in excess it may produce anxiety and uh, <clears throat> agitation sorry so here we can consider it as vata increasing property it also causes excess coffee causes excess we are speaking beyond uh, one's tolerance it causes headache anxiety ringing in ears uh, irregular heartbeat irritable bowel syndrome high blood pressure so some of these symptoms so seeing that we can consider it also in high doses it can increase definitely increase vata uh, so a balance is very much required unfiltered coffee some study show that unfiltered coffee can increase total cholesterol low density lipoproteins it can increase low density lipoproteins triglycerides as i said total cholesterol so heart disease it can also lead to heart diseases so that is we can see here unfiltered coffee uh, increases all these components which are uh, kapha medha vruddhi kara so like uh, unfiltered coffee can be considered as increasing kapha and medha and uh, coffee filters reduce these effects on cholesterol coffee filters uh, reduce the cholesterol accumulation effect so we can consider that as anti medha on one side we can see that unfiltered coffee is uh, increasing kapha and medha and in turn increasing lipoproteins triglycerides and is a threat to heart diseases and when we see the uh, filtered coffee we can see that uh, it uh, has uh, an anti medha effect like it is uh, a antagonist to medha so that is fat or adipose so in large quantities uh, it is ahruddhya 
So coffee is up there. It is definitely not good to the heart and it poses a risk factor heart disease. So some studies show caffeinated coffee might produce increased blood pressure. We are not speaking it as a general rule. So some studies show it might increase blood pressure, weak bones and osteoporosis. So this also points towards Varda increase if we use in excess. So coffee when used in a uh, balance, it has some beneficial properties when used in excess uh, caffeinism it has some uh, harmful uh, effects on the body uh, likewise coming to the tea uh, tea also uh, some studies show it is uh, it reduces the risk of obesity diabetes and heart diseases just like uh, coffee did it reduces uh, obesity diabetes and uh, heart diseases study show anti kapha we can consider it has here uh, it has anti kapha property so it increases heartburn and aggravates acid reflux it increases heartburn and uh, aggravates acid reflux here we can see that it is increasing pitta and also vata vata pitta or pitta vata kara so we can consider as or prakopa kara and uh, increasing anxiety so p also increases anxiety stress and restlessness taken in high proportions it disrupts the sleep cycle it causes nausea headache dizziness all these symptoms pointing towards uh, the action of tea in increasing water so through uh, some of the studies which have gone through about coffee and tea so these are the points i could collect uh, depicting the action and the role of coffee and tea in balance and out of balance on our health and doshas there may be a number of such studies in the internet you can find it out but relevance of those things are uh, quite you no know, questionable many a times people are behind certain things when it happens to be uh, such a type of material they come across it in a day to day practice they tend to analyze everything out of that and they'll come out with some or the other outcome outcome of those researches may not be uh, really sound and it may not be really fixing on each and every conditions or even each and every patient or a person it is not so and we need to understand basically in case of kapha i mean in case of coffee it's very clearly it reduces kapha to some extent it increases pitta and in therapeutic dosage or something like or a regular pattern of coffee dosage depending upon the person to person in that therapeutic dosage if coffee is consumed it is not going to increase the vata but it is facilitate the vata to do its function because vata has a chala guna if chala guna vata is done in a proper direction it moves in a proper direction all other functions will be rejuvenated in the body if vata gets obstructed then automatically the other functions also becomes default by default it will go damaged or it will be hampered so whenever we take a coffee probably because of this coffee it is stimulating the vata to move in its proper direction not allowing to go for the gudana vata so it is clearly moving in every proper direction where the actual vata has to move it is stimulating its chala guna thereby it stimulates all other functions to happen and whenever they say it vata will I mean coffee will improve the thinking capacity uh, it is very clearly i say it's a biased observation a uh, one person who is not at all interested in coffee if you give to him and you just check it out whether his thinking capacity increases or not that may not be the truth so we need to understand where there is a interest towards a coffee then there may be chances of that things happen but the basic understanding of coffee is that it is ushna in nature it improves vata to some extent and facilitate the vata particularly chala guna it stimulates thereby other functions other dosha functions are also been uh, controlled or even increased or properly done then it decreases kapha if you understand these thing that is fine in excess already dr uh, raghuram sir has already told in excess what will happen if you take excess it will going to cause lot of issues yeah so rightly pointed out by guruja sir one point i definitely agree is the studies are definitely biased we cannot rely on uh, the studies available about anything so we know that coffee and tea are uh, see the best marketed uh, strategies uh, in the world so different coffees and different so if i need to market coffee i need to show that tea is not better if i need to market one variety of coffee i need to show that the other varieties of coffee are not uh, good for health so there is a competition for uh, tea and coffee Uh, marketing people so also the producers so when it comes from before it comes from producer to 
uh, the production to the consumer. So a lot of biased things will be there. So based on the studies itself, people will go behind coffee and tea. So that definitely I accept. So having said that, coffee and tea are also the topics beyond Ayurveda description because we don't find them uh, uh, the, them described in Ayurveda text. So basically, if we need to discuss about the properties and also the action on doshas, I think we need to uh, do that on the basic set of information available uh, about uh, uh, coffee and tea because Ayurveda has not made the research in that perspective. So uh, then it becomes an absurd topic and an unwanted topic for discussion in this uh, platform or any platform. So yes, these studies are definitely uh, not uh, reliable. Uh, some studies are going on, some studies have already... Uh, so. Again, biased because of the marketing strategies only. So having said that, uh, so these are uh, uh, the coffee and tea. So again, it depends on uh, what uh, people, uh, the person likes. Again, uh, uh, if, if you don't like, we cannot force it on uh, some person. And definitely coffee and tea should not be and will not be a part and parcel of the prescription of any doctor. So take coffee for this problem or take this. Uh, with coffee, take this with tea, like Anupana or Sahapana. <laughs> Definitely these things are never going to rope into the clinical practice at all. So, but I found, uh, so it, it is, in a way, it is an interesting question. In a way, it is a, uh, what we can call it as a broad spectrum topic uh, to discuss. Having said that, uh, there is a limitation of the studies uh, being biased. So, how reliable, uh, reliably we can assess the role of coffee and tea on uh, Vata, Pitta and Kapha or anything, uh, taking Ayurveda parameters into consideration uh, is definitely questionable and debatable. I mean, I agree that, you know, the most of the research uh, goes to the left or goes to, goes, goes to the right, though not prescribed or, you know, not explained in, uh, in Ayurveda text. Uh, I mean, it, it is something which many of our clients and patients take, so we need to have some directions and probably these research though may not give us specific indications or you know specific guidelines at least we can make out uh, you know what's the effect on a respiratory system or digestive system and mental system anxiety etc with the help of this research and i would like to add one more point there the most of the studies what we understand which is um, placed in the internet we just observe that it is not totally the coffee they are behind the caffeine are behind the tannin they take the tannin and caffeine from that and extract it and they'll use it and they'll study it and they'll come out with some other things just simply caffeine is not coffee coffee contains caffeine similarly the uh, tannin in the tea so we need to understand drug as a whole we need to consider here and we need to consider in a basic platform like pratyaksha pramana when we consume coffee with a simple decoction what is its effect? So based on that, we can say it is basically it has a three important thing. It improves vata at the first level. It increases in its quantity if it is consumed more in um, um, by increasing the pitta and it decreases the kapha. So that much we can say that. And uh, second thing, there are so many things which is uh, not told in Ayurveda, but presently we are come across the people are using like maybe Pani Puri, Goi Manjuri, so many things which is not told in Ayurveda, but we we'll consume this. And we have to say that whether you to, it is good to consume or you need to restrict that while explaining the Patya many a times. We need to do it because basic principles have been laid down and based on that basic principles, we need to analyze whether this comes in this category or not. Then we can, based on that, we can say to the patient that this is not required for you because it is going to increase the pitta or it is going to increase the vata. So like that, we can analyze it and tell it. So there is a, um, those many uh, drugs are there. For example, even many siridhanyas, people nowadays, the uh, votes, they last, whether it is told in Ayurveda. The same thing. Even though there are many drugs are there, which is not mentioned in the classical text of Ayurveda. And many classical texts of Ayurveda, what they speak, that are not available presently. That is also there, vice versa. So we need to understand so many things, but whenever presently we are living in such a world that people are exposed to so many varieties of foods and uh, beverages, as well as the drugs of various nature growing across the continents, and we need to express them in terms of Ayurveda, whether it is going to increase Vata, decrease Vata, increase Pitta, Kapha, in that fashion only we need to explain them. But particularly, at what level it is going to help, whether it is at the uh, Rakta Vashwatas, whether it is at the Mano Vashwatas, or whether it is at the Ama uh, Rasa Vashwatas, or it is at the Amashya level, or Pitta, something like that. 
we need to express them so that we can incorporate all those uh, new things also into the defaults of Ayurveda. Yeah, absolutely, I agree, sir. So my uh, statement that uh, this was not a topic for Ayurveda discussion or anything. So why I said that is, uh, yes, as Guruji sir said, Pani Puri, Bel Puri, whatever people are eating. Uh, so they are the foods of choices and coffee and tea are also food of choices here. Uh, so, and also the new generation foods, like uh, as we went on with the evolution, so many foods came into uh, the thing. So coffee and tea never existed uh, uh, previously. So these are the modern, uh, modern era or modern generation foods or the beverages, what we can call it as. So people, uh, people are definitely attracted to certain things and as doctors we need to tell. So when we need to tell, so the people, we need some authentication. So to tell that it acts on kapha, it acts on pitta, it acts on vata. We don't have reliable sources to do that in Ayurveda. What does Pani Puri and how does the combination act? We haven't researched through the Ayurveda. We need to depend on some work, some work whether it is reliable or not somebody has done it is it is only a question to ponder upon so we need to see what what exactly is its impact on the health system and the organ system and also the tissues at various levels that was my point when i said uh, so uh, it may be a topic uh, uh, which which might not be appropriate to the dais but having said that everything we are comparing with the ayurvedic standards like uh, uh, how how does anything act on uh, the dosha or dhatu or mala or the entire system or a persona as a whole uh, we, we are comparing so many things even in the easier with the platform itself we have discussed so many topics uh, uh, which which are not explained in ayurveda but we try to understand them through the ayurvedic so there i totally agree we need to decode the good and bad foods because food is a big taboo food is a big uh, thing uh, and nowadays food and beverages people are worried to know what happens with me when i take these things so i think yes uh, doing that is good but we need to uh, be authentic while giving the information so at least close to authentic, authentic uh, levels or uh, close to uh, something uh, like vata pitta kapha in relation to coffee or tea whatever we are trying to uh, explain so for that we at least need some references some standard references or standard research works or the works done on these uh, particular uh, things so while searching so some information may be reliable some uh, uh, may be unreliable so that is the thing and one more point i want to tell here uh, tell here is works which are unreliable as guru rajas are said so that that is itself a point of attraction for the people so if somebody tells that coffee or dash dash something is good for heart or good for uh, a breathing purpose suddenly that place on the mind when i purchase that product and start taking that i will remember that study so here the studies are definitely biased some studies are biased uh, when i start taking so those studies and whatever we find in the internet definitely most of the things if not all if not all most of the things will play on the mind of the people if some benefit is given i am observing when i am constantly taking i am observing if somebody tells that uh, uh, just like just like uh, you give sitaparadi churna to a patient and tell that this will relieve your cough so the patient is constantly observing uh, every time the patient is taking uh, sitaparadi churna the person because the person doesn't know what is sitaparadi churna so they are following the doctor's instruction so there they are observing whether my cough will come down or not so that also see that might help in a positive way or it may build up to the stress so like there are so many patients who wait till the so if i tell use these medicines for three weeks so once the third week is ending the it plays on the mind of the person that my medicines are uh, going to finish on the 21st day and what if i get the symptoms on 22nd day so they start on emailing or putting the uh, messages or giving a call to the doctor my medicines are about to finish within two days what shall i do if the symptoms come back so this too much of observance is also a problem and some people allow things to happen and some people go on what has what has been written so here the literature is playing a very important role in playing on the minds of the people the internet material whatever is available about coffee tea or modern day foods uh, maybe some snacks or anything so it constantly plays on the mind of the person so if i'm taking this i will find this benefit because that has been cleanly written in block letters underlined their statement so that statement they will remember they are really observing and if the person is observing from a positive perspective definitely they will start uh, feeling that coffee is a better remedy for my respiratory disorders rather than any other medication so because that has been written there 
so this is how the marketing works so if the person doesn't believe in that the person starts doubting that product he or she may not find the benefit at all so there are so many things which happen due to the uh, the internet is totally clouding the internet information most of the information is clouding the minds of the people making them either believe or uh, not to believe in certain products so that is increasing either the attachment or detachment from certain things gura sir moving on with the same coffee and tea yes it increases it can potentially increase vata uh, and pitta and can decrease kapha so if they are added with milk or sugar can the can they become somewhat that pitta and vata stimulating effect will be reduced to some extent sir definitely when we add something to the basic drug like a coffee or tea to that we are adding milk it's quite opposite the milk has a qualities which is quite opposite to both coffee and tea and to that even if we add sugar once again it is going to reduce the effects of coffee and tea so thereby you can say it, but doesn't mean that two opposite things are pour together and they become a uniform you know decoction or concoction that will going to balance everything still this coffee and tea has a potential efficacy that can cause a habit forming type of thing and coffee and tea definitely has a role in stimulating at the lower doses and you take these things in the lower doses they stimulate the vata to move in a proper direction and thereby it you feel like that everything is going on and that something like like the first stage of madha what we call it, tell it in a case of a madhya when in the first stage then the shrotas will be open and everything will be fine people will be having some sort of uh, you know feeling good so same thing happen with the coffee and tea in a single one uh, one one cup or two cup of tea per day that type of thing when you add milk and sugar definitely it is going to increase the deep. otherwise the coffee and tea both have potential to reduce the kapha but when we add milk and sugar to it slowly reduces the capacity of the coffee and tea to reduce the kapha thereby it increases the as uh, the kapha decreasing capacity will be hampered what we can say yeah regarding this question uh, some people are uh, okay with black coffee and uh, a herbal tea or just a, a tea without adding milk and uh, uh, sugar so when when people are not fine with uh, coffee or tea so something untoward is happening so when they take coffee with milk or sugar or tea with milk and sugar something untoward is happening regularly but still they cannot come out of the coffee and uh, uh, tea addiction so that probably uh, also indicates either they are using too much of coffee and tea or uh, whether the components which we are missing are acting like viruddha so mutually antagonist so when we speak about virud- uh, viruddha it, it may be personal it may not happen to everybody but for that person uh, who is not tolerating coffee and tea yet not able to give it give it up so there, there are some people who t- take coffee and tea and at the end of the day they take a uh, pop up some pills to balance the stomach so why is this happening probably in that person we need to see that uh, the components like uh, the coffee uh, sugar milk whatever they are mixed together they might be acting like a viruddha ahara for that uh, particular person that also needs to be taken into consideration do you recommend your patients to avoid coffee or tea in certain diseases definitely in case of amla pitta and uh, any gerd conditions and all those things definitely ask them to avoid and wherever there is uh, articarial rashes and such type of conditions definitely ask them to avoid and definitely when there is uh, increased pitta like burning sensation is more in the body or something like that or uh, skin, some skin conditions where the pitta is uh, aggravated like uh, herpes or uh, something like that in those conditions i would definitely ask the patient to avoid these things so those who are having even a regular cons- habit of uh, consuming uh, coffee and tea and already suffering from acne uh, definitely say that avoid those those things so like that it may be in the case of acne it may be in the case of herpes or any other burning sensations or even the burning sensation in urine or it may be amla pitta or it may be even grd articarial rashes and these type of thing conditions where there is a pitta involvement of pitta is there it is showing its effect where these coffee and tea definitely going to increase those condition further so we need to avoid that so i usually suggest to my patient of these type of conditions to avoid those coffee and and also sir because some people would be taking coffee or tea like four to five times in a day but still for them it's not like a bad habit so in the history taking i think it makes sense to just casually ask like how many times coffee or tea you are taking because what is normal for them could be addiction and that could be causing any you know pitta and vata symptoms see definitely when uh... 
patient is uh, consuming uh, coffee and tea number of time may be adding the information plus number of time may be even increasing his condition maybe it may be supporting but still we have a concept in ayurveda called vokasatmya for example i may not be accustomed to coffee if i take more coffee maybe more than 2 cup per day then i may get irritated and i may get um, acidity so i may not be in a per, uh, no, um, person to take more coffee so, but there are people who consume coffee like anything from morning when they um, get up from bed they'll uh, go for a bed coffee from there it starts uh, till the night even after the food they'll consume once again coffee in the night so that type of habitually people are there so that becomes a vokasatmya for them but still they are showing their effect on the body but they are vokasatmya to them that sometime people are habituated help them to overcome to some extent when they are young okay coffee and tea in limit is is all fine but what is the ayurvedic beverage uh, which we should all take gurad sir you you first please dugda very simple <laughs> well, if you want to make it something so then go for the almond milk boil the almond uh, crush it and mix it with this and add some uh, yellat a little bit of candy sugar then it is a purely an ayurvedic way add a little bit of kesar to that it becomes an exotic and royal so the moment you said almond milk there was a huge gasp of relief hot water and cold water best beverages hot water is the best vata uh, for balancing and uh, cold water do not chilled water is uh, best for uh, uh, and also the reduced waters what we can tell so that is one thing so you we can also uh, prefer yushas and also uh, yavagos peya so on a regular basis uh, if they can prepare and take it it is good for agni and good for uh, uh, general health once once in a day so if they can take uh, some paya will be brewels which are prepared so they are also healthy they are good for agni and they keep your uh, system in balance and the stomach and intestines in balance and uh, your stomach will be ready to digest uh, certain things otherwise you cannot digest and, uh, and also like uh, from a spiritual point of view also because they are stimulants and unnecessarily brain is getting stimulated whereas in a spiritual path exclusively for spiritual minded person fenty is not so considered as good because the mind itself sh- should be st- self stimulated with the meditation and tattvic foods etc and coffee and uh, tea act as a deterrent is what the uh, general belief is good as- definitely uh, even uh, from the point of view of ayurvedic beverages if you talk about then uh, along with this almond milk we have plenty of other things like sugar cane juice is there where we can add little bit of uh, pinch of um, no ginger as well as uh, sainthavallavana and even pepper to that and we can be you and even lemon to that jambira rasa all these things then there is we have got um, coconut water tender coconut water then we have uh, the purman's uh, elixir we have got takra buttermilk is there we can use that buttermilk classes like in a bms classes of dravana you said that guras uh, that drinking drinking tea in large quantities and then drinking water in large quantities some people do that and that can become a cause for prameha urinary disorder slash urinary yes. disorder with frequent urination slash diabetes can be yes. it's a very it's a very clear the indication that anything which is hot and cold it may be even consuming lot of coffee and later followed by lot of uh, plain water and similarly with a lot of tea and then consuming water that's a hot and cold alternatively consuming will lead to prameha yes sir uh, thank you aragram sir please Yeah, Fanta and Himakalpanas as explained in Ayurveda can be uh, the best examples. Fanta, uh, already the tea and uh, uh, coffees were explained in Ayurveda in the form of Fanta Kalpana. So Fanta so, and uh, Himas can be used here. So depending on, our, depending on the doshas, depending on uh, the practices and also the liking, these things can be used. Good as a surprise. Definitely still there is a one a very classical reference saying that what we can be use it is called as a paniya musta parpataka udicha ushira chandana nagaraihi shutam shitam jalam dadya pipa sa jora shanti very clearly for leaving the trishna we need to go for this jadanga paniya that can be used there are plenty of such things absolutely yeah. Absolutely, yeah. sir. Yeah. More, more we dig deep, you know, more uh, you know options we get. More, more options we get. Even uh, we can go for Kharjura the mantha. There are plenty of such things. Generally considered as fruit squashes again, a uh, natural option because it is like a you know devil in the room that they say milk. Whenever the milk topic comes, because it's Sri Lanka and milk is sort of generally. uh explain one other other uh, you know participant would ask like milk is not not so good you know lot of hormones injected and uh, this one and there is gluten inter- intolerance and 
a lot of chemicals fed to the cows. Ideally speaking, there are many, many centers, even in, in a Western country like U.S., even in the Netherlands, Europe, where you know cows are bred more in the New Jersey, New York area, and in the Netherlands area, etc. So there are centers in which cows are bred in and bred and maintained in natural ways. And when cow milk is sold naturally, and obviously we are pointing towards that. And even in India, also in in the many village setups, it is possible to uh, have cows in the natural setup without much chemicals, etc and get cow milk, which we are uh, talking about. And coming to the veganism, uh, it is good for some people, you know, obviously who want to, you know, who want to have lankana therapy, who want to, uh, are in a food detox, so to speak, who are, you know, habitually who are taking a lot and they are cutting down and who are like generally gluten tolerant who are, and who are not exposed to good, healthy form of milk. For them, it makes sense to not take milk and go for almond milk and whatnot, but, uh, but for, People who take milk and people people who do not have any uh, any personal restrictions or belief system that you know it comes from animal animal product who are not per perfectly vegan milk is still good good as a sir. See, Ayurveda very clearly speaks about nitya kshira abhyasa as one of the prasayana and uh, typically there is a way of how we need to breed the cows the cow has to be taken care in a way it should be not as a commercial way of producing more milk and selling it or something like that so there are a set of things and even the goshalas they usually do these type of things and without any much of uh, chemicals or even the cow feeds and so on and things they will be naturally fed on the grasses and with uh, dals and remnants of the sabjis, so that type of vegetable things, they will be organic grass fed and all these things definitely will going to, uh, no, as a, typically the what the cow milk has been explained in Acharya Charaka in uh, 20th chapter and similarly everywhere, very clearly they are given importance to the cow milk. We need to understand that milk whenever we speak without any um, suffix or prefix, it is always meant that it is for the cow milk what Acharyas have explained in the classical text. But presently what we have made that cow milk in the market, it is our risk. We people, we made it in the wrong way, projected in that way or uh, by giving some injections or hormones to that and make the cow to yield more and we have brought uh, Jersey cow or uh, Holstein cow and uh, they made to give more and more uh, milk and we made developed such cows which has a big garden and they can give you 20 liters or 30 liters per day all these things these are all man-made and this whenever man try to invade the nature nature gives back with a lot of diseases so we need to understand this so when, when typically when we are talking about the milk means it is a naturally grass fed and organically treated and developed to cows and producing only 2 liters or 2.5 liters per day milk that is somewhat good and sufficient for human consumption and best for as per our uh, classical texts also. Yeah, so sticking to this context, uh, in one of the chapters of Rasayana, Mr. Charaka tells that uh, before taking the Rasayana, the person has to live for one year, complete one year amongst the cows. He tells, you need to live amongst the cows, with the cows. A simple, so that is to depict, you need to live a very simple life out of the city and urban life. And you need to be like a cow herd, like you need to be between the cows. And then after one year, you need to take the Rasayana. Okay, I'm not uh, touching the details of the Rasayana here. Uh, you need to take Rasayana after one year. So that also means to tell that the cows are living in their zone. So like as Guruja sir said, uh, so grass fed and also organic foods the cows are eating, like a goshala. So the person is living there like an ascetic and later the person is consuming Rasayana. So that itself shows that, so when the person takes, uh, that is a preparation, that is a preparation for the person to take and the person is not allowed to take any other food other than the milk. So here, the entire year the person is consuming the milk and living a simple life, living with the cows, he learns simplicity. He, le uh, he learns the Achara Rasayana and then prepares himself to take uh, that particular Rasayana only on such a body uh, and mind that, that the Rasayana will affect. So this also shows that the practice of uh, uh, having a uh, very safe zone for the cows and other animals was there prevalent in uh, the olden days. That was also given as a part of therapy where the person were allowed to stay there 
and then take uh, uh, take the rasayana and goshalas and uh, many other things are there now so ayurveda has also explained many types of uh, kshira like milk so by default it is cow's milk only uh, one of our uh, easy ayurveda doctors and also uh, who is very near and dear to us dr rajinikanth patel so has adequately used camel milk during the covid uh, era like adequately even in, in gujarat people found it very difficult to find uh, camel milk so much was the prescription of uh, dr uh, rajinikanth patel uh, for pa- camel milk so he made camel milk very popular for people he kept them on patya only camel milk you need to take and he also has the stats of how it benefited to those patients who were suffering from covid as the only diet single diet when the people are not able to take food take camel milk as a diet so medicines camel milk and some customized diet he used to give every milk has uh, its own good properties so probably if the animal is bred and fed in a proper place and the milk is sterile and if we know so definitely that uh, milk has a benefit so ayurveda as uh, guru ji sir said and we have been discussing in the previous classes uh, kshira is one of uh, the best rasayanas uh, which can be consumed on a daily basis provided the person can tolerate the milk and also guru ji sir has Uh, you know demonstrated how you know cow milk, milk only diet is extremely useful in the treatment of uh, liver cirrhosis with uh, ascites yes sir please go ahead sir Absolutely. i would like to add one point here that uh, recent days what i am observing here in uh, my places people are coming with donkeys and selling donkey milk people are very fond in uh, consuming that they are telling so many good about this this donkey milk is good for the brain and neural functions and uh, so many other things and it improves immun- immunity and so many things they are uh, marketing and people are coming down the streets uh, by just simply asking for a donkey milk and uh, people are buying it happening i, I just got the reference from astanga hridayam milk of single hooved animals ekasha pakshira uh, includes horse donkey etc is hot in potency useful in water disorders slightly sour and salty and can cause less uh, even uh, there is some reference for that as well now so, some additional points uh, given by some uh, previous here there is also protocol of used in cancer treatment where they administer coffee enemas which supposed to clean your colon and but drinking coffee is not as part of that protocol and coffee enemas just you know going through a few research yeast overgrowth to decrease that in autoimmune diseases also it's are uh, used frequently so co- coconut milk versus cow milk uh, both are coolant and uh, both are nourishing and both are coming to the stomach and uh, digestive system can be compared good at the surface please definitely coconut milk and cow milk is very uh, in uh, property wise they both are very very near to each other so even sometimes for the cow milk you can even replace with the coconut milk coconut milk is uh, definitely good to skin it is definitely good to neural functions and of course it is rejuvenating definitely we can think of it whenever there is uh, some allergy or something like that with the lactose intolerance or something like that to the cow's milk or something like that. in that condition coconut milk is the another option there is another one one another option is also that like soya milk that can also be used and regarding soya Uh, again this can be estrogenic and there is this so a little bit of controversy is that probably coconut milk is safest as explained in the vegan food again there is uh, one more question we'll take that up to the next topic on kavala and gandusha uh, with sesame oil so kavala and gandusha can be roughly approximately term translated to oil pulling uh, with sesame oil uh, sesame oil is considered as ushna and so can kavala and gandusha with sesame oil in a pitta prakriti person can it increase or cause any gastric symptoms so sesame oil uh, kavala or gandusha so provided the uh, person swallows a lot of uh, oil the person is not tolerant to sesame oil and uh, see when you do kavala and gandusha the uh, person should be advised not to swallow that up so later the person can spit and rinse the mouth if that is done i don't think uh, there will be problem uh, in my clinical practice i haven't advised i'm not a, a practitioner of kavala and kandusha so if people ask i probably would have referred and uh, told them to do it or not so but i have not uh, advised not noticed so so even uh, when people have asked for sesame oil in couple of cases whenever i have advised i have not uh, seen the pitta aggravation uh, coming into the picture or the gastric uh, problem coming into the picture unless and otherwise if the person is in high pitta 
as you said it is having ushna tikshna guna and also it has ushna vipaka also i feel but uh, same time the sesame oil also has properties which can calm pitta so like uh, when we go through its rasas and also the other properties so definitely uh, i think it is uh, even madura vipaka so if we can go through those properties it has pitta calming uh, properties but uh, the oil going into the stomach needs to wait until it is converted into madura vipaka so only then it may so until then the person may find, find a little bit of intolerance once the person has swallowed i'm not sure about uh, this but uh, i have not uh, advised in plenty of cases and uh, not noticed this particular effect of uh, sesame oil in kavala kandusha so instruction is uh, uh, be be careful not to swallow in middle of the practice sesame oil is a very typical oil it is very good to the skin entire tamil nadu consumes lot of sesame oil is a main edible oil for them and even they apply it to the head and you know that tamil nadu is comparatively in a hotter place in india they come apply to their head very clearly it is going to cool their head so typically sesame oil or gingeri oil is or the tilakaila is very good to the skin and hair and head provided it is applied there only if it is consumed inside it is definitely going to increase the pitta in the body it increases pitta so that's why many a time even uh, tila pista all these things it should not be taken much in quantity it is ushna in nature that's why tila if it is excessively taken it also helps in the uh, no garbhashya uttejaka many times it cleanses the is uh, one so that's why the many a time those who are in a you know when um, primarily when there is an uh, menstruation occurs in during those time they'll given the tila uh, laddu or something like that which is made up of tila which is given to them and it is typically if uh, tila is going to increase the pitta if it is taken even tila tila if it is taken inside also it is going to increase the pitta but when it is applied to outside head or high am in body it is comparably cooler so this is a very typically its prabhava is in a in different manner thank you sir and there's a question on goat milk that cow milk versus goat milk goat milk is not easier to undergo digestion Some, somebody is very fond of milk and somehow cow milk is not suiting then probably goat milk is a better choice you see there is no harm in trying that but goat milk is a typically a one which is little bit katu than the cow milk it is not so soumya as cow milk but it has a influential character on that it because it is a goat consumes each and every type of vegetable and the plants that's so very clearly in ayurveda says there is no nothing there is no plant exists which a goat can't eat so goat eat every type of plant that's why except for the few plants that's why vasa has been named as adalodakam in malayalam and adumuttaka soppu in kannada its goat won't touch it because it's a bitterness so that's the reason uh, goat has been given that credit and goat milk definitely is one of the important thing which helps to build the tissues that's why the goat milk has been very extensively propagated for kshaya wherever there is a chatakshina or kshaya where there is a uh, person who is having emaciated and lost his body tissues definitely the goat milk is one of the important choice for that when there is a problem for i mean allergy or something like that or at all intolerance to cow milk but as a if it is a intolerance to lactose then the same thing even applies to the goat milk also uh, there are some herbal oils which are prepared with uh, non veg non veg ingredients uh, usually suffixed with samisha samisha mahamasha taila is there so for example so, uh, when we use it uh, do they carry the smell of the meat in the oil or is not detectable it's a very typical uh, you know imaginary thing first i would like to say if the doctor as well as the patient knows what is the smell of mamsa that is very typically then we can think of it point number 1 point number 2 when oil is prepared by using this mamsa definitely there are chances that the smell may go into the oil but if a patient is not aware of how the mamsa would smell and he is not aware of the oil what we are going to use then how come he will come to know that which has a mamsa in it or it is smelling like mamsa is very typical thing but only thing is that because there are certain people they don't consume mamsa and when you are trying to apply oil on them if it contains mamsa better take a consent without consent don't do do that if a person is there emaciated 
you feel that mahamashi taila is the drug of choice here for me to do aganga and all those things and the person is a totally vegetarian then better consider thing and explain thing that the oil which i am going to use which contains mamsa in it i hope you should not have any objection to that because you are not eating it then if he is comfortable with that then you can use it otherwise then you have to go for niramish mamashi taila something like that so we need to take some consent and typically because of the prevailing uh, local body rules and regulations and um, whatever the law says that we need to follow otherwise uh, it doesn't uh, make any sense that it will definitely if you put mamsa into a thing and the mamsa smell will come in the oil maybe may not be always so if we want to uh, mask anything that if you add little bit of karpur at the to that while cooking then nothing will happen no smell will come so it is very typically uh it doesn't mean that that what is a, um, a particular pe- peculiar um, smell which comes from the mamsa like that uh, pitta smell of pitta something like that so that won't come in the oil usually it won't come but when we know that the one of the ingredient is thing then our mind starts finding out any smell is there or not we'll be moving in that direction so that comes uh, to the end of this session thank you, thank you. see you in the next session of guru bodhana namaste